Hello everybody, my name is Mike Gag, and welcome to my video on events in my series on Windows programming with C Sharp. In previous videos, we have used events uh, for all sorts of things. Uh, we've done button clicks, form loads, validation, uh, check change, things like that. So uh, at this point, we're really not strangers to the concept of events, but I do want to have a, a quick video here to kind of talk about what are these events that we've been using and, and how do they work and, and how how does this function as a complete process? Um, so basically, uh, in Windows programming, and I'm going to go ahead and run this to sort of illustrate. In Windows programming, we have our programs that simply run and wait. Uh, there's something called a message loop going on in the background that's part of the operating system. And as the user does different things, these events get raised. All right, the events are kind of like letters or messages or emails, if you will. Uh, and those emails, or those messages get sent to anything that's listening for them. All right, uh, and then these listeners will receive these messages, will will look at them, see who they go to, pass them on uh, until the appropriate control gets them, and then does something. So essentially what we're doing when we create these event handlers is we are saying, hey, this control is going to handle this particular event, and then we register and it creates a listener. What that means for us is that we can set our programs up in such a way that they can handle a, while, a wide variety of operations. Just about anything that you can think of can be uh, interpreted as an event. All right. Uh, so resizing a form, uh, clicking a button, moving your mouse, dragging and dropping, um, focusing, unfocusing, minimizing, maximizing, all these things can raise events that we can then interpret to do some form of code. Uh, so we can create some very robust relationships and complex behaviors using a multitude of different events. So let's look at a standard event handler. I'm going to go ahead and close this here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to generate my form load event handler by double clicking on my form one. And let's look at what makes an event handler an event handler. Um, so on, or just like every other function we've seen so far, we have some access modifier. In this case, the event handler is private. Um, our event handlers don't return anything. They're void. Now, the name can really be anything. All right. Uh, we can name event handlers just like any other function, just anything that we want. The only thing is when, when uh, Visual Studio auto generates an event handler, they use the name of the control, underscore, and then the event that they're handling. And that's not a terrible way of, of naming your event handlers because then you can look through all your event handlers, you can see what control calls it and what the event in particular is. This is the load event of form one. Uh, so all of this is pretty standard, you know, uh, access modifier, void return type, some name. This is the part here that is absolutely mandatory. All right. Uh, two arguments, always two arguments in event handlers. And C Sharp does it very similarly to a lot of different languages. So if you've ever worked with events in other languages, they're all very similar and they all generally have the exact same arguments. Okay. The first is this sender object. Now, if you remember inheritance uh, that we covered back in part four, uh, you can get sort of an understanding of what's going on here. Every single control and every single class in C Sharp inherits either directly or indirectly from object, class object. That allows us to put uh, anything into an object uh, variable because a control is an object or is an object. It's that is a relationship, right? A button is an object, all right? A form is an object, all right? That allows us to, to put anything inside an object, all right? And so sender then is whatever control raised this event, okay? So in this very instance, sender is going to be form one. If I have a button one click event, sender will be the button that was clicked. All right, um, that becomes very useful because not only are we saying, "Hey, the form was loaded," we also get a copy of the form just in case we need it. Um, and that doesn't necessarily seem all that interesting because 
if it's form one, we can just access all the stuff in form one. Uh, but there's other stuff we can do with that, which we'll cover here in a little bit. So uh, just store away that, that the sender is whatever control or object raised this event. All right, and then we're gonna do something neat with that later. All right, and then every uh, event handler has an uh, event arguments E. All right, that E is everything that's pertinent to that event. Okay, it's not always of type event args. Uh, sometimes it's it's cancel event args or, or validating event args. Right, we'll look at some of these different ones. That really doesn't matter so much unless you're hand coding your event handlers. What does matter is this variable, oops, I just moved everything, this variable E, all right? Uh, I, tell, I tell people when I talk about event handlers, E stands for everything, all right? Uh, it's everything that's pertinent to that event. Uh, so it can, if it was a mouse click event, it could have the X and the Y positions of the mouse. If it was a, a, a validating event, it can have a cancel property that allows us to say, no, we didn't validate, right? So there's a lot of things in E, and it changes depending on the type of event. But what's important is it always has all of the pertinent information. All right, so E is a very powerful uh, collection of information inside of our event handlers, okay? Every event handler we're going to have is going to follow a similar format to this. All right, we can look at a couple different ones. So I'm going to come back here to my form one. Now I'm going to go to my toolbox. Now I'm going to add a button. And I'm going to add a checkbox. And I'm going to add a text box. Uh, i got to find it. There we go. All right, and I'll just space them out here. Now, when I double click and control, you've noticed so far that when you double click and control, you get an event handler. Um, Visual Studio will generate an event handler uh, that's the most reasonable event handler for that control. So the most reasonable event handler for a button is its click event. That's what you do with a button. All right, so when I double click it, we get a click event. Now, a checkbox, the most reasonable is if it becomes checked or unchecked, a, a check changed. So when I double click this, we get a check changed event. And in a text box, when I double click this, we see we get a text changed event. All right, uh, all three of these are event arguments, but the event type is different, as you can see. Now, as a matter of fact, I don't believe we've uh, I've shown you guys the text changed event. We'll, we'll take a look at that here in a couple minutes. All right, but you can see that by double clicking, uh, we can get all of these different event handlers, but they're always the ones that make the most sense for that control. Another way that we can create event handlers, let me go ahead and just delete these. By the way, I'm going to show you this real quick here uh, because you might see this uh, when you're working in uh, Visual Studio. So I deleted the event handlers, okay? Um, that's not going to go over very well when I try to build this because these buttons are going to look for those event handlers. So when I try to run it, I get a bunch of errors, all right? And it's going to say uh, form one does not contain a definition for button one underscore click. Uh, it's basically saying, hey, our event handlers are missing. If I double click on that, it's going to take me to this new file, this form.designer.cs. Now, I highly recommend you not mess around in here. Um, this is the sort of the behind of the behind of the design. All right. Um, so this is where all of our, our controls are actually generated with the code and all their properties are actually set. And we'll look at how to do this here in a little bit. But we have to do something very important. We have to come in here. And we have to delete this line of code where it's re registering this event handler. And we have to do that here. And we have to do that here. All right. I'm not recommending doing it this way. I'm just showing you, in case you get this error, how to fix it. All right. Now at that point, we're just going to close that and get the heck out of there. We don't want to stick around in there. All right. Um, another thing you can do here, I'll just recreate this event handler by double clicking on the text box. I'll delete it again and I'll run it. Of course, I'm gonna get an error. I could always just delete the control and that also gets rid of the error. But if you say you wanted to, to delete the event handler but not the control, you would have to go into the designer and unregister it by removing that line of code. Okay. 
Another way of generating an event handler is say I want to create a click event for my button. All right, I'm going to click on my button. I'm going to come over here to my events and I'm going to find click. It's automatically highlighted for me here. And then I can click the down arrow and pick other ones, but I'm not going to do that right now. Instead, I can just double click in this empty space and it's going to create a button click event. This is a neat way to create events in case I want to create other events for my button. Like, let's say um, I want a mouse enter event. Okay, uh, so let's create a, a mouse enter all right, event handler. And let me go ahead and add a label on top there. And in my mouse enter, I will simply say label one dot text equals mouse entered button, just like that. And when I run it, see, just by mousing over a button, it says mouse entered button. And then of course I can take that to the next level. Let me go back to my button and let me find mouse leave. Double click in there, and then I'll set label one dot text. equals nothing. And so we can do neat stuff like that. Anyway, okay. Uh, so we can generate all sorts of event handlers, all right, for all sorts of complex actions uh, in here by double clicking the white space and then just adding whatever we want uh, whenever that event in particular gets raised. All right, so I told you I was going to show you why that sender object was important and now I'm going to. I'm going to talk about that and I'm also going to talk about reusing event handlers. Alright, so let me go ahead and clear out what I have here. Let me go back to my code and get rid of these event handlers. There we go. Let me just run it, make sure... Um, oh, it's still looking for the form load event. I should have gotten rid of that. I'll just delete it from here. There we go. Get out of there. Alright, so we're back to a working project. Fantastic. Alright. So let's say I create a program that has a whole bunch of different buttons that all do the same thing. All right, uh, so I can look here. Let me go ahead and go to my toolbox. I'm going to add a bunch of buttons and a label. Okay, and let me just kind of move stuff around here. Actually, let me just, uh, I'm a little bit weird about making things line up. There we go. Okay, uh, so we have our nice little form here with six different buttons. And let's say we want them to all do the same thing. What we want them to do is to write their name to this label. So I'll double click button one, and I will say label one dot text equals uh, button one. Whoops. There we go. Okay. And then I can come to button two and double click and copy and paste this and say, okay, now it's button two. And I can come to button three and I can copy and paste this and say, now it's button three. And if I run it, we see button one, button two, button three. That works great. But I hate redundant code. I'm not a fan of redundant code. I'm, as Well, I shouldn't be. Redundant code's no good. Um, it's flimsy. It's easy to break. Uh, and it's just pointless. Uh, look at, I mean, th this is 99% this is the exact same code. The only difference in every one of these is this one line there. All right. And let's say I had 100 buttons, right, that all kind of did the same thing, uh, but wrote different stuff, right? There's there are, there are much better ways of handling this. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and uh, delete these. All right. Uh, and instead, I'm going to write my own event handler. So it's going to be private void, uh, and we'll call it just button click. We'll be generic about it. And then we'll say object sender and event args e. All right. And inside here, I want to write the name of the button of sender to this label. Now, 
If I type sender dot, all I get are the things that sender has. Because while everything is an object, it's still just an object, and an object isn't going to have any of that advanced stuff. All right. So what we need to do is we need to do something called a casting, where we convert sender back into what it originally was. Basically, it started as a button. It got converted to a generic object so that it could be sent along with everything else. What we can do is we can convert it back to a button, and it will regain all of the, the, the methods and the properties that the button had before it was converted to an object. All right? So let's look at that. So I'm going to create basically a holder button. So it's going to be button my button equals, all right, and I'm typing this a little out of order just so you can see it. Button my button equals sender. But sender is an object, not a button. So at this point, we need to cast sender as a button so that it can go in here. And the way to do that is just saying button in parentheses right beside it. That turns sender into a button and puts it in here. So now my button is sender. These are the same object, but one is of a type object and the other one is of a type button so that we can access all this stuff. And so now I can simply say label one dot text equals my button dot name. Just like that. All right. So now we have this one click event that's generically written that all of my buttons can use. All right. So now the question is, well, how do we point all the buttons at this click event? And if you remember, if I come back over here to my design, I'll click on button one. I'll come over here to my events. And for the click, I'm going to hit this down arrow. And I see button click appears. It's going to list all the different event handlers. So button click, great. Now button two will be button click. Button three will be button click. Button four will be button click. Button five, same. And button six, same. And now I'll run it. And we see it works the exact same way as I was intending originally. However, it takes up a fraction of the space in code. It's much more simple, and this solution is much more robust. The best thing about this is if I need to change how my buttons uh, work with my form, if I have to change what my buttons do, I now only have one place to change all of my buttons instead of six different places to change each button independently. So that basically uh, can show you that event handlers are great, they're, they're very fantastic to be reused. One thing you can do is I can use this button click event for a text box or a label. All right, But I want to be very careful because if a label calls this event handler, like, let's say, well, I can just show you, if I go to my label and I go to my click event for my label and I click button click, all right. So now if I click on this label, it's going to fire off this event handler. Even though this event handler was built for buttons, it, the label doesn't care. I set this as the event handler for the label. It's going to try to cast it as a button, and we may see some interesting results. So I'm going to click in the label here, and I'm going to get a crash. Because a label is not a button. All right, and so we are unable to cast it. So you got to be careful. If you're planning on reusing event handlers for multiple types of controls, you can't do casting inside. All right, or you can do safe casting where you try to determine if it's a button before you cast it or if it's a label before you cast it, which you can do. All right, so uh, you just got to be much more careful if you're reusing an event handler for multiple types of objects uh, and you're doing any casting. Okay, so that is going to conclude my video on events. In the next video, we are going to talk about dialogues.